Good morning, everyone. Um, good afternoon and good evening, wherever in the world you are. Um, I want to bid a warm welcome to everyone who's joining. I know we have a lot of people signed up and a lot of people excited um, to see what we're going to show. Um, the team here at Synergy Homeopathic is really, really excited to bring you um, this first public unveiling of our new software. Um, and it's a very big milestone for us, for the homeopathic community and for us as a company. Um, we've all been working really hard. And um, what I'd like to do before we start um, the actual training itself is to welcome Dr. Rajan Sankran, who is going to tell us a little bit about the history and the background of where we are coming from and his own personal association with the company. So I give to you, everyone, Dr. Shankaran. Is good? Great. Yes, we can see you. Great. So hello and welcome to the training session of Synergy Homeopathic Software. I would like to tell you a story to begin with. And it's a story that's a long, about 30 years ago, I used to work with, you know, the books, uh, Kent's Repertory and Materia Medica. And later on, we had the synthetic repertory of Horst, Bartel and Klunker. And these were the tools we were using. And it was good. And then I met, you see, this American homeopath, David Walkenton. And uh, he was a computer, like crazy about computers, and he was developing the software, uh, Mac Repertory and Reference Works. And he came to Mumbai, and I was, you know, we became friends, and he was a very dedicated homeopath as well, and a brilliant guy. So he was trying to, you know, uh, get me into computers, and I was resisting so much. I said, no, I am very happy with the books. Forget these computers and all, not for me. But I saw him sitting with the computer all the time, all the time, all the time. You know, everywhere he goes, he had a computer with him. So I was a little bit curious and I uh, started seeing what he does. And it was interesting. And I said, OK, I think I will try out this uh, computer thing with homeopathy. and you know, start using the program's Mac repertory. And uh, I think after this, I was hooked. And till now, 30 years later, I cannot exist, in fact, without using the software. So David was a genius. And uh, there were two things about him. One was that uh, he had just brilliant ideas. He was himself a practicing homeopath, and so he knew the intricacies and all the different tools that a homeopath needs in order to, you know, further his uh, his profession. As well as David was um, very friendly with the topmost teachers of homeopathy in his time. You know, Roger Morrison and Jeremy and Andre Sain and. And uh, you name it, I mean, you know, Scholten and all of these people, he knew them very intimately. And uh, they all trusted him that he was here to do something uh, very, very significant. And they really gave from his heart, their heart the support to, for him to develop not only the program, but also several strategies which were based upon the various methodologies that each of these homeopaths used in their practice. So his idea was not to develop a unidirectional or a one-sided program, but a common pool where every homeopath could use and uh, he could uh, further his own ideas also. And, uh, and then came, you know, the most brilliant um, innovation of David, which is the reference works. Because by putting 
you see all the homeopathic books into a reference library and creating a search tool which would say you know fear within three words of dog or you could say fear stroke dream stroke delusion stroke anxiety within three words of dog you were creating a rubric on the spot and the rubric that you created through the reference works was so much more than what you had in the standard repertory you can say the repertory was static and the reference work was dynamic because every time you add a book or a proving or a case into the reference work it would automatically include it in the search just expanding the search exponentially if fear of dogs had 23 rubrics in the repertory it would have like uh, 23 remedies in the repertory it would have like 80 90 100 remedies and not only it had the remedies but it would show you exactly where that remedy occurred in that particular remedy and you could click you could go to the book open and you can read the exact sentence where that remedy is there and it's so it's so amazing so amazing so amazing i cannot tell you and david was the first one to invent to create this kind of a search tool and uh, the other thing that he did was to create several strategies of you know how to use the repertory for not only for practice but also as a research tool as a comparison between remedies in your practice to create a materia medica from the repertory by saying okay only give me you know all the rubrics of this one remedy you had a whole creation of a repertory uh, from the repertory you created a materia medica of the remedy it was quite amazing and then you could limit it to a certain family or a certain group you can say well give me only you know in these rubrics only the snake remedies only the plant remedies only the only the solanaceae so he created so many multiple strategies graphs that uh, and all all this that he did was based on inputs directly from the teachers and the masters he would go to every seminar listen to them talk to them and then develop strategies that's why his program mac repertory and reference work began to be the standard program that every teacher of homeopathy was contributing to and using in his practice i can tell you that i, I mean any teacher i can think of was using it and is still uh, using it so this was the situation and uh, you know uh it it was i met uh, david some years ago in vancouver and i i remember this meeting with him because we were very very close friends and uh, I, i i met him in a restaurant i remember it was an indian restaurant and i asked him you know david what is your succession plan suppose something happens to you you are the one man uh, show here you know you are the developer you are the salesman you are the administrator you are everything but your skill your um your special talent to create to the strategies and these all of these things have you trained somebody to pass it on in case something happens to you because it's so valuable and uh, david said to me mm, rajan i haven't i do i i I, sh- i know i should have done it but i haven't done it and i hope i will be able to do it but unfortunately within 6 months of that meeting david developed a very very dangerous severe disease which took his life and uh, that was the tragedy and after he died you see the the program the destiny of the program became quite you know in doubt because uh, nobody was really willing to take it and to develop it further and and there was you know several uh, offers but nothing materialized and the program was about to go into bankruptcy and about to go into disuse and about to be you know uh, put away 
and it was at this point about uh, nine or ten years ago that uh, you know I had a kind of a crisis of conscience, and I said, no, uh, if there's something I can do for homeopathy, I sh I should save this program, and I kind of had a one would say even a kind of a divine inspiration to do that i had a dream of a guru telling me do it you have to do it and i trusted that and uh, and i somehow i negotiated a deal and i bought the program and uh, bought the company in fact and uh, along with a colleague of mine lori dak we both together bought this company and we started to you know uh, develop it uh, and keep it alive etc etc but we uh, did not have the skill set and the capability to do what david did you know we had a team of people but it was not you know we didn't have a successor to him and then it was that i was working on another software program with my uh, former student and now colleague Dr. Paresh Vasani, we were working on the Vital Quest program that was based upon the sensation method. And it was a beautiful, Paresh had done a beautiful, beautiful job. So beautiful that you could actually type the entire case or paste the case into the Vital Quest program and you click a button and it would, you know, shortlist all the sensation words from that case and analyze it into a particular kingdom or a sub kingdom or a family etc etc it was just amazing what he did he created an expert system like that called the vital quest so this was a guy with that kind of talent and then at some point about a few years ago i said to paresh you know paresh you know what's the point of me you know being on vital quest and also on Mac repertory reference work. Why don't we just merge the two companies? You come, you have the talent, you can be a worthwhile successor to David Walkington, and you take it over and you you become the active, you know, developer of this whole thing. And Paresh, you know, accepted this uh, this this mission, one would say, and uh, he did a few things which he was already doing. One was developing the vital quest, and then developing a repertory called the reliable repertory and what is the idea of the reliable repertory you see the thing is that we have a we have you know we have other repertories also in the field but the question is you know as the repertories grow in bulk their reliability reduces you know many times what happens in the race to increase the bulk in the number of remedies or the number of rubrics one kind of you know uh, compromises on the uh, authenticity or the quality of everything that you put in so more and more uh, top homeopathic teachers felt that this race for bulk is counterproductive in, in terms of quality and we need to have repertory that may be smaller but extremely reliable and authentic and how do we know that a reliable and authentic is when every rubric and every remedy you have you know a, a, a reference string attached to it so you click on the remedy and you have the whole reference uh, you know where it is coming from in the exact words so you know that every remedy entered there has been entered with care and with diligence and that's the kind of repertory Paresh was developing also so we have a whole team of people here in India developing this repertory and it's now come to a, a stage of uh, maturity and we have introduced this also so at that point when Paresh joined it was that you know the the apple company had uh, decided to create a new operating system which would not support you know the earlier versions of mac repertory and reference work so we would go like out of uh, out of fashion in some sense and so we had to undertake a rewrite of the entire program from the scratch 
and that's the that's the mission that Paresh and his team, very very dedicated team, uh, undertook. And we uh, started to develop this from the scratch. We found a whole team. We found a whole software company, and we and we took the opportunity to upgrade everything: the look, the feel, make it more modern, include more strategies, a bring in the Vital Quest into the main program, combine Mac repertory and reference works into one interface in one platform to make it so much easier add more reference books create more strategies and do all these kinds of things and uh, i must say that uh, our hard work of the last three years has finally come to you know bear fruit in the form of the synergy homeopathic software which uh, which has just been launched just been released it's so fresh and uh, so beautiful that uh, it 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 takes the mac repertory and reference works and the vital quest program to a whole new level and uh, it's that's what uh, it's that's where we are right now i'm so excited i want to tell you one uh, one funny story also that uh, you know when uh, i I bought the company and you know we announced it that the company is going to I'll be alive and the programs will be now for you know for a long term don't worry about it I can tell you that the number of people who wrote me mails of thanks and uh, in it was mentioned in in several journals in the editorials and personal mail I can tell you that nothing that I did in my life invited so much gratitude than this that was the point i realized how much this program is valued by the masters by the teachers and they gave me such wholehearted support they said you know rajan we'll do whatever we can do to support it and that's what they are still doing and it's on the on the shoulders of these giants like you know jeremy like jan scholten roger morrison and you you name it all of them you know bill gray and so many so many masters that we have they are all uh, totally with us behind us lending their expertise to us and uh, we plan to to just take this forward and uh, create a a program that's not only uh, in content beautiful and advanced but also technologically so that very soon we would be coming out with you know a, a mobile version which can be used on you know smartphones and tablets a cloud version in which you can so easily upgrade your you know update your your program and then we want to not only be a software company but a company that supports all homeopathic activity whether it be educational activity whether it be social activity whether it be to bring the community together whether to bring all the information on one platform and that's why this uh, synergy homeopathic software is not just a program it's a whole movement and uh, i welcome you to 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 join us in this movement and let's do the best we can for our most uh, beautiful science of homeopathy and i can also tell you just one more thing that whatever i have done in the form of research whether it be into the plant kingdom or animal kingdom or the mineral kingdom i could not have done even a fraction of that without these programs you know david made it so convenient and conducive to research also so you can imagine how advanced these programs have been and we are only taking that some steps several steps several potencies higher thank you for listening and now paresh and rupali and other people will take you through the program enjoy learn benefit and uh, good wishes
Thank you so much, Dr. Rajan. Um, that was a wonderful, wonderful introduction. Um, and, uh, you know, without, I, we are just, I, I don't think I can say more about the program than Dr. Rajan has already said. So um, I just want to lay out briefly the structure of the training that's going to unfold now. Um, and then without further ado, we'll get right into it. Um, there are uh, basically um, three presenters today, um, and it's going to be myself and Dr. Paresh and Lucy. Um, we are part of the team here at Synergy, and we are going to be taking you through different aspects of the program, showing you the benefits and the exciting new features. Um, we do have I mean, three hours is a good amount of time, but it still feels like, you know, we won't be able to get into everything, but we're going to try our best. Um, after each section um, and each presenter will hold a short Q&A um, to um, answer questions that come up just about that section. So please type your questions into the question box. And uh, at the end of the session, with time permitting, we will hold a wider general question and answer session. Um, and um, I think first up, I would like to introduce Lucy, who's going to start with the repertory module in the software. Um, Lucy is um, a core team member here and an operations manager at Synergy Homeopathic. She's also a, a certified classical homeopath based out of North Carolina and very, very passionate about homeopathy. Um, so welcome, Lucy. Hopefully everyone had a chance to view the videos that we have available on our YouTube channel and our website. Um, if not, I am going to cover, we are going to cover quite a bit of what's in the videos, but I just wanted to let you know that those are available. And this too will be recorded and available on our YouTube channel. So let me jump right in. Uh, right now you're seeing my screen and I am a repertory module, which you can tell the closed book icon is highlighted right here. Um, this is the repertory module. And if you move to the right here, we're in the left pane. I'm looking at the reliable repertory. If I click on that, the reliable repertory opens in the right pane. Um, in the left pane, you can also view the chapters within the repertory as you can in the right pane. Um, it's nice to have the chapters open in the left pane for you to navigate. And I'll show you that in a little, in a few minutes, uh, how that works. But in the left pane, you can also see all the repertories that are in your library. Uh, the way you see that, you can click on the minus sign, the chapters collapse, and now you see all the repertories that are in your library. You can also use your directional arrows in order to navigate the left pane. So if I hit my right directional arrow, you can see that the chapters open up again. If I hit the left directional arrow, the, um, the chapters collapse again. You can go down to go to another repertory um, and go back up with your directional arrows. Now you can also open multiple repertories in the right pane on different tabs. So I'm gonna, for instance, open the Allen's repertory. I'm gonna show you how that's done. You simply put your mouse on the name of the repertory you wish to open and you right click. To right click on a Mac computer, you have to hold the control key down. Uh, and then you say open in new tab. And you can open really as many repertories as you wish uh, in the right pane and go back and forth between them, which is really nice. Um, um, I'm gonna now go into the reliable repertory. We're back in the, on the reliable and you can see all the chapters. Let's go into the mind chapter. All right, and so now we are inside the reliable repertory, the mind chapter. Right now we have a view of rubrics and the remedy count and the remedies. But you can change your view if you come over to this icon here, the one that looks like an eye, and click on it. 
You can click on, uh, you can make no remedies if you don't want to see remedies. You can, you know, choose whether or not you want to see sub rubrics, authors. You can see cross references if you want to. Um, right now we're in the all remedies by grade. But that's how you change your view. All right. And so I also want to let you know that over here in the left pane, you can search for a certain repertory if you have one in mind. So for instance, if I wanted to find Fatox repertory, I simply type it in the search window, hit enter or the search icon, and then it comes up. And then you can open it again in the right pane by right clicking and choosing open in a new tab. To get back to your full list, you simply X out of that. Um, another quick thing, this icon here gives you the history of where you've been in the repertory module. And this icon here, if you have foreign language books, this is how you would access them in repertory module. I only have English books, so I'll keep that there. All right, let's go back into repertory module. And I'm going to also on this talk be showing you clipboard because of course the repertorization goes hand in hand with clipboards and graphs. Over here, as I said, this is the repertory icon. Down at the bottom, the icon that looks like a clipboard is the clipboard icon. And one way to open a clipboard is if you simply click on the clipboard icon, you can see that clipboard number one opened. Um, I'm gonna show you another way too to open a clipboard. Uh, if you wanna delete a clipboard, you simply right click and you can delete, that's one way. I'll be showing you another way. All right, and so, um, by the way, I just wanna also mention since I'm opening clipboards here, you can open up to 20 clipboards and you can see that when you get to a certain number of clipboards, a scroll bar appears and you simply scroll down to see the clipboards with the higher numbers. And another way to delete clipboards is if you right click on the clipboard icon, you get this window and you can choose to delete whichever clipboard you want. I'm gonna go ahead and delete them. I'm gonna show you how to open a clipboard from the uh, repertory. Um, <clears throat> okay. So here we are. I am going to show you a case. So we're going to go back and forth between the repertory and clipboard. Um, I'll get started with, um, we're going to go, I'm going to open up reliable repertory in the left pane, and I'm going to go to the stomach chapter. And right now, you know, we're at the very beginning of the stomach chapter, but what I want to go to is irritations. And the way you can just pop right to that is if on your keyboard, you just start typing irritations. So I'm going to type E-R-U. And there you go, it popped up immediately. Now I want to go to uh, something deeper within irritations. I don't want the big rubric with just that. Any, any rubric that has a plus next to it means that there are sub rubrics uh, within that rubric. In order to access those, you simply have to hit the right directional arrow on your keyboard. So I'm going to do that. And now you see irritations has popped up here to the bread, breadcrumb string, um, we call it. And I'm in the sub rubrics now. And the one I'm looking or in particular, actually, I want to put night and I want to put evening. Now, if you want to choose two rubrics at once, you need to hold down the command key. If you're on a Windows computer, that would be the control key. Um, so you select two, three, four, however many rubrics you want by doing that, holding down the command key or the control key. And once you've selected the rubrics that you want, all, all I'm doing is I'm hitting the return key. Uh, I'm on a Mac. If you're on a Windows computer, you would hit the Enter key. And you can see right here, clipboard number one opened automatically by doing that. And you can see too, the little sub number two, and that tells you that the two rubrics that I chose here, um, they, uh, they went into the clipboard. All right, so that's one of the ones that I want to go into my clipboard. 
I also want to find uh, something related to irritations and eating. So to find that next rubric, I'm just going to type on my keyboard EAT. And there you go, we're at eating. Now, this one does not have a remedy count next to it. If I were to hit enter right now and try to put this rubric in my clipboard, it would not go into my clipboard because there are no remedies in it. You need to go into the sub rubrics. And so I'm going to hit my right directional arrow. And now you can see I'm in the sub rubric of eating. You can see it's popped up to the bread, bread um, string there. And the rubric I'm looking for is after, so I'm going to highlight it. Now, one more way that you can put rubrics into a clipboard is to click, hold, and drag. And you just have to make sure your mouse gets onto the clipboard. And now you see that number turned from a two to a three. All right. Now, I want to go back um, out of eating, out of erectations. I could do that by hitting the left directional arrow key, you know, hit it twice. But another way to get to that very efficiently is just to click on stomach up here. So I'm going to click on stomach. And now I'm looking for the rubric about acidity. So I'm typing ACI on my clipboard. And there it is. And I'm going to hit return. And now you see the number four there. All right, in order to switch chapters, I am going to now go to the teeth chapter in order to continue adding rubrics of pertinent to my case. Um, and I'm going to type in clinch, CLE. You really only need to type the first three letters. You don't ever have to try, try to type a whole word. And there it is. But I wanna go deeper into this rubric and so I'm going to go into the sub rubrics again by hitting the right directional arrow. And the one I'm looking for is teeth firmly clenched during sleep. So I'm going to hit my return key and you see that that number turned to a five. That's that rubric went into that. All right. And now I'm going to add another physical symptom. I'm going to go to generalities. You can see I just used my scroll bar to get down to that chapter in the reliable. And I'm going to find the um, I'm going to find the rubric about sun, S U N. I typed on my keyboard, and again, this is a rubric that has no remedies in it. You have to go deeper into it to find the rubric you want. I'm going to hit the right directional arrow, exposure to the sun, and I'm going to have to go deeper into that. And this is the rubric I'm looking for: exposure to the sun aggravates. So I'm going to hit enter and that number turned to a six. All right, so now I am actually gonna go into the mind chapter, but what I wanna do is open a new clipboard for it. There are several reasons you might want to, um, you know, different homeopaths practice in different ways. Some just use one clipboard. Some maybe put the physical symptoms on one clipboard, the mental symptoms on another. Some maybe put acute symptoms on one clipboard, chronic symptoms on another, some maybe put symptoms by chapter. It really depends on how you work as a homeopath. I'm gonna get, go ahead and show you, uh, I'm gonna put symptoms on a second clipboard so that I can then show you how to merge clipboards later. So I'm gonna go to the mind chapter and find my mind rubrics for this case. All right, I'm in the mind chapter and I'm going to type W-O-R All right, what I was looking for was worry. Now I wanted to show you something here. Worry has neither uh, a remedy count nor a plus. So you probably think to yourself, wait a second, what do I do with this? This is where the cross references come in very, very handy. I'm going to come over to my eye, turn on cross references, hit okay. And then I'm going to type WOR again to get back to that. And here you can see the cross references show you that, okay, there's no, there are no remedies under worry, but if you go to mind anxiety, that's the same concept. If you go to mind cares, worries, full of, that's the same concept. So um, I could go to one of those and pick up the, the rubric that I need. Um, but uh, I, I wanted to go here to show you this, but actually for my case, I want to actually go to fear because 
I'm looking for the symptom about fear that something bad will happen to your family. It's really more of a fear for my particular case than a worry. So I'm going to type in FEA and I'm, I'm at fear. I'm going to go into sub rubrics of fear by hitting the right directional arrow. And then I'm going to type happen. Something will happen. I'm going to go deeper into this because I want to make it pertinent to her family. Here it is right here. This is the rubric that I want. And I'm going to hit enter. Now, I just want to say right here that you can also use global search to find rubrics in the repertory module. But I'm going to let uh, Rupali is going to be covering global search and she'll cover how to find rubrics and repertory module in global search when she talks. So right now we're just we're just doing a straight up repertorization uh, the old fashioned way. OK, so the other um, I'm going to go back to mind by clicking right here in the in the breadcrumb string. Go to mind. And I'm going to type AVE. I'm looking for the word aversion. Um, there it is. In my particular case, um, the woman did truly have an aversion to her husband. Long story, um, there was an affair, no divorce, no now currently no intimacy in the, in the relationship. I'm going to go deeper into that. And I'm looking for the one related to husband, which is right down here. You can scroll, or I could have typed HUS. There it is. I'm going to hit enter. Okay, so now we have clipboards that we can work with um, because, of course, I can't really show you much about clipboards unless we have rubrics in them. As you can see, I've just opened a blank clipboard and it would be very hard to show you from a blank clipboard. Now we have some full clipboards to work with. Um, all right, so I'm going to go into this clipboard that has the physical symptoms. And I'm going to start showing you some things here. First of all, the icons within the clipboards. You can click on this one. You can see remedies in the clipboard if you choose, if you want to. Uh, you could see any of these things. Um, I choose to see no remedies in the clipboard because it, it just keeps it neater. It's a smaller surface area, and so I don't want to crowd it with all the remedies. Um, one other way that you can get to um, from the clipboard, if you really want to see the remedies are, that are within that rubric, is if you right click on the rubric, you can always go back to the repertory and view the rubric there with all the remedies showing. Um, also the right click, while I'm here, I'll show you, you can copy a rubric. If you want to take it over to another clipboard, this is how you copy it. You can delete a particular rubric this way, um, and you can grade a rubric, which I'll show you in a moment. First, though, I'm going to show you how to combine two rubrics. Sometimes in repertorization, you haven't quite found that perfect rubric. So you bring a few over to the clipboard that are similar, but you don't want that symptom to you know, overtake the case. You don't want too much emphasis on that particular symptom. And one way to avoid that is to combine rubrics. And the way to combine is if you highlight the ones that you want to combine. To do that, you simply, again, hold the command key down if you're a Mac user, the uh, control key down if you're a Windows user, and you choose what you want to combine. I'm going to combine these two, and I'm going to go up to this icon here, and I click on it, and I get a window, and I'm going to title this Eruptations PM. Hit OK. And now you see that irritations is over here in your graph. It's also still on your clipboard with the details of what's within it. Now, if you did want to do this at any point, you simply right click and you're able to ungroup it. If you wanted to add another rubric to this combination, you would simply highlight, select the new rubric highlight the combined rubric, go up here and click this again, name it, it can be the same name, a different name, and then you have the new com. All right, that's how you combine. Um, I'm also gonna show you 
how to grade. You can see this right here. Uh, currently, there are no, everything is a zero, and I'll show you how you can grade. So this stomach acidity uh, was the main complaint. I'm gonna go ahead and right click, sorry, right click, go back to this, and we're gonna go to grade, and we're going to make that a three. And you can see that um, it popped up here to the top, and that's because we are viewing the rubrics in order of grade. And so this is the highest grade, and it popped up to the top. You can also view rubrics by section, and they line up in the same order as, say, the Kent's chapters. And so you can choose that as well. All right, so here we have, we have this, and we also have our rubric uh, with mind symptoms here. And you know you can analyze each separately, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to look at them together and I'm gonna merge them and then we're gonna look at all the other filtering features. All right, so you go over to your clipboard icon, right click, and I'm going to look at one and two. I'm gonna show you what the comparison looks like. You can compare up to four clipboards. Right now we have two. And this is the screen that comes up. This is the window you see, clipboard one, two, and the remedies are in alphabetical order and you can just scroll to compare. That's if you wanna compare clipboards. Let's go ahead and merge our two clipboards. I'm going to select clipboard one and two again, and I'm going to hit merge. Okay, and so you can see now clipboard two is empty. There's no sub number. Clipboard one has all the rubrics here now. All right, so let's take a look at the filtering options here and the analysis options. This icon here allows you to filter in your clipboard. You can filter by kingdom or remedy. Now, if you come over here to the graph area, you can also filter by kingdom with all of these icons here. So if you wanted to see all the remedies in your case on your clipboard that are part of the animal kingdom, you would choose this icon here. And it, now you're looking at all the animal remedies in your case. Um, and so that's a filter. Whenever you apply a filter, this icon turns red to let you know that a filter is on. Um, you can turn it off by, re by just clicking it again. So, and you can also just switch between animal, plant, mineral, but eventually when you wanna turn off that filter, you're going to need to turn that off. All right, um, but so that's very, that's very general. If you're, look, if you're clicking here, you're looking at all the animal remedies. If you come over here though, and you, and you filter for kingdom, you can actually look for very specific animals. So here are all the icons again, but you could also come down to A to Z and just type which specific kingdom do I want to look at? So let's say we wanna look at mollusks. I just start typing it in the search window there and I check it and I hit apply. And now I am looking at only the mollusks. And to take that filter off, I just hit the red button again. You can do the same thing with remedies. Um, you can say you wanna look and see um, you want to compare. Let me tell you too, though, that this, this again is deeper, a deeper filter. If you want to just look and see where one remedy is in your graph, you can come over to this type to search and you can just type in one remedy, hit enter, and it appears, it appears at the end. To get rid of it, you just erase it. But if you want to compare a few remedies, you would come over here, get on the remedies, and choose a few. Let's say, you know, Belladonna, Stramonium. 
You click here to make sure you got all the ones that you wanted to see, just to double check before you hit the apply. To deselect, you use this. All right, so we're ready. We just hit apply. And now you're just looking at those two remedies. So that's another way to look specifically at remedies. All right, I'm gonna turn that filter off. There are different ways also of, we're gonna talk about analysis. Oh, one more filter that I do wanna point out, it's very important. When you're in the graph, um, you can right click on any of these remedies. So let's say I right click on Pulsatilla and you can see more information. You can go to the reference library, view substance information, go to the web, go to provings.com. But this is a very nice filter right here at the bottom. So if you click here, um, now you're looking at all the various classifications to which the remedy belongs. And if you select one, let's say we select um, this one, now you're looking at um, the graph is limited to that classification. So that's a very nice way to filter for classifications. Also on the graph, right now we are in the default view, which is waffle graph. Waffle graph shows you the colored squares. The light blue is a one grade. The sort of a blue purple is a two. The purple is three and the black is four. If you don't want to remember what the colors mean, you can always come up here and change your view. All right. Um, there's also multigraph, and I'm going to talk to you about that now. Um, so right here, if you click on this icon, uh, you can analyze the case in different ways. The default is to do um, most rubrics. Because I have a grade over here, uh, most rubrics considering intensity is the one that it's defaulted to. And basically, that emphasizes those rubrics found in most of the patient's symptoms. But you can analyze in different ways. For instance, small rubrics, if we looked at that. Now you're em emphasizing rubrics that have fewer remedies. And so less well-known remedies are emphasized here. Um, so for instance, you can see that this rubric that only has 14 remedies, um, it's, it's up, up front, and this one with 18, up front, this one 24. The, the smaller rubrics are emphasized with that analysis. Um, there's also, a small remedy will also bring the smaller remedies to the front. There's also highest grade. We can choose that. And that is basically, that is the one where the emphasis um, is on the remedies that have the highest grade in all the rubrics. And you can see right here, this number, the total, pulsatilla rose to the top because it has the number, uh, the highest number of high grade um, in, in all the rubrics. Um, prominence kind of is the same as that. It shows you the leaders in each rubric and polycrests come to the front when you use prominence as well. Let's go back to most rubrics. And I'm gonna show you one more feature we haven't covered yet. So the elimination button is right here. And um, Oh, let me just show you something before I do that. I want to back up. This multigraph gives you an overview of all those analyses that I was just showing you. It gives you the overview. And before I forget to mention it, this icon right here gives you the print option. All right, now we're going to get to elimination. Um, if you click it, so with elimination, you are wanting to know, uh, in any case, when you take a case, there are certain rubrics uh, in the case that must be covered. So you wanna make sure that you have included, um, that you're giving one of the remedies that's in that rubric. 
you want to make sure that that rubric is covered. So you can hit a minus. Now, um, in, in this particular case, I thought the aversion to the husband was particularly striking. So I'm going to go ahead and hit minus on that. And you can see natrium carbonicum came up to the very top. And that is actually the remedy that I gave her. And it, it completely helped her, her GERD and a lot of the other mental things that were going on. So that's, that's what you would use this for, just to hone in on the remedies that are in the rubric that is very pertinent to your case. Um, and I think, I think I've pretty much gotten to the end of my presentation. Um, just one other thing, if you want to save, if you want to save a graph to, um, to a patient's chart, you just come up to this, view your patients. I've made up some names. None of these are real. I'm not showing anybody's chart or name here. Open. And you hit save. And you see that this comes up. And I want to save clipboard one. That's the clipboard with all my information. Hit save. And now you can see it's right here. All right, uh, I am going to now take questions. Um, let me take a look here. Okay, I think I think a lot of the questions have already been answered um, offline by the moderator. So I'm going to go ahead and Rupali is going to be next. She will be showing um, off the reference library as well as global search. Uh, Rupali is the COO of Synergy Homeopathic, as well as the sales director of North America. Um, for the last 10 plus years, she's been studying and practicing homeopathy in the United States. She's also a certified classical homeopath. She has, she joined the company about a year ago and has really, really been a wonderful leader guiding us to our launch and where we are today. So, I want to welcome Rupali to the next portion of our training. Thank you, Lucy. I'm just going to share my screen. So um, I know I'm, I'm so glad to be speaking to all of you today. Um, I, I've had several conversations with people that I have been helping with tech support and getting their program loaded. And um, the the one thing that I'm hearing is that, you know, um, people rightly so, and I did this too, when I first started testing the beta, want to hold on to McRepertory and reference works and they feel, you know, they've been using them for a long time. And um, this is a new program and they're just not confident and they feel that, you know, it will take some time to learn. And I just want to assure you that this is a really, really easy program. Um, it's different from McRepertory and Reference Works, but it does all the all the same things and a good few more besides that. Um, I feel it's, and this is from my own practice, from working with it, um, it's, it's faster, it's more accurate, it's more intuitive. And the one thing that I did not expect, you know, there's serendipity involved in it, in the sense you go looking for something and the, and, and it's so powerful that it shows you other things that you hadn't even considered. Um, and sometimes that leads you down paths that you might not have considered otherwise. And I think that's wonderful. So I want to show you a little bit about what I've been discovering with the program. Um, you know, I, I do think it's transformative. It's, it's, it meets everyone's needs. The one thing that, you know, I'd like to start with is when, when, way back when, and I was not part of the company then, and this is a story that I hear from Dr. Parish, um, when um, the program was being um, talked about and they were saying, you know, they realized they had to start from scratch and they talked to all the constitu constituents within the homeopathic community and um, students, teachers, practitioners. And, um, you know, the realization 
kept coming up that everybody's needs really are different. Even though we're all in homeopathy, we're all practicing it. You know, students need to learn about it. They need to acquire basic knowledge. They need to um, figure out tools and how to use um, the program or case analysis and how to take a case. And practitioners have slightly different needs. They, yes, they have to, you know, um, uh, they have to keep up with what's going out there, new remedies, new provings, what's happening in the world of homeopathy. But at the same time, they actually have active practices and they don't know when they open the door what kind of patient is going to come through the door. So you need to be able to have in your toolkit a variety of approaches. They need something that helps them tailor their homeopathy to the the, the patient that walks in through the door. And teachers, you know, uh, maybe practitioners as well, but they also have a special um, mission, which is to educate their students. And um, this can mean education about our classic foundation um, literature and tools, but it can also mean about what's going on outside. And a lot of our teachers are also involved in research themselves and need to be able to be looking at um, the materials that we have in a whole different way um, to push the boundaries of that research. And so the program that we had to develop had to you know, fit all these needs. And, I, and, I, and we think it does. Um, and I want to show you a little bit of what it does. So really what I found is that case analysis can be very intuitive uh, with this program. Um, it's accurate and it's really, really fast. Um, everything that um, is doable in the software is right there on your screen. You don't have to know sets of commands or know what gets done from where. I feel like it's all right there. Um, um, the, the part that I'm going to be covering really covers, you know, what reference works used to do. And um, in the new program, it's the reference library, which is a separate module, and the global search combined, which really do what reference works used to do, but they're really one step higher because they're doing, uh, you know, a few more things in a broader, deeper way. Um, so let me show you a little bit about um, where this is. Um, so as Lucy talked to you, here's the repertory module right here. Um, and the part that I'm going to be covering in a little bit more detail is the two icons underneath it. So the open book icon is your reference library. And the um, magnifying glass here is really your sort of global search which is this powerful search engine i'm going to demonstrate um, and then um, underneath that you see the graphs and that is our family graph section um, right over here and below that is your patient management um, over here is our community our connections to the homeopathic community through various ways um, and I think if we have time, Dr. Paresh will cover that later. Um, and below that is the clipboards, which you saw. And then briefly, I want to just show you what's up here as well. Um, there is patient management, which allows you to open patient records, save them, delete them, etc. cetera. Um, edit is really about um, how your screen looks and so is view. Um, you can... Um, basically zoom in, zoom out, change the font, et cetera. Help is where the instruction manual is. And also a lot of the abbreviations are there for remedies, authors, books, et cetera. Those are there. Um, user preferences is under user. And the last one is vital quest, which also um, Dr. Paresh will be covering later on. Um, so just a little bit um, about the reference library. Um, it's still, we've still got the huge library with all the literature in it, um, and you are welcome to choose whichever package works right for you. Um, the different thing here is that you can have multiple books open simultaneously in the program in the same way that Lucy showed you multiple repertories can be opened simultaneously. 
um, you can now go and search within a book. Um, and really exciting, you can compare and read two books side by side, or you can actually compare two remedies side by side, or you can compare the same remedy written by two different authors side by side. And you can see what um, Vermeulen is saying about pulsatilla versus what um, Dr. Shankran is saying about pulsatilla. And you can read that side by side and see, you know, what, what the different Materia Medica are telling you. Um, and the last piece, which I find really interesting because I first started using the program when I was in school and uh, it was McRepertory and Reference Works at that time. And, and when, if I would try and study for school through Reference Works, it was much harder because you couldn't read a book from cover to cover or you couldn't read a section or a whole remedy even sometimes like you know cover to cover you had to go in and out and this is a pet peeve of mine so i find this part of um, the benefits really exciting um, and so let me just show you how we do that um, so here's my program and like i said um, this is uh, the reference library. Um, I will just show you all the books that you own are in your left pane here. Um, this includes all your Materia Medica, your journals, your clinical literature, cases, provings, everything is in here. Um, there is a way to organize the information. You can look at it either um, with remedies and then all of your remedies will show up or you can look at it uh, with books, whichever view you prefer. Um, in both cases, you're going to see the little plus sign next to each reference, um, which basically says that that reference can be exploded to show all the remedies available underneath it. So if you really wanted to just read Alan's handbook and you want to say what he had to say about aconite or pulsatilla, then you can scroll down this way. Um, you can also just type, um, if aconite is your preference, then you can also just type in here and it will show you all the remedies related to the letters you have typed. Basically, if this is, this is um, a really good way to search. For example, you don't have to type the full and you don't have, you can just type a few letters even. And if you type P, it will show you the list of remedies starting with P. If you just went to PU, it will show you PU, or you could type PULS if that's where you were heading. Um, and the same thing is possible for books. Um, if you have a larger library than most people, then it's going to be a while to scroll down all the way to find the book you need. And you can use the search box here to just um, look. I mean, most of us have favorite books or authors when we're looking up Materia Medica um, and we tend to gravitate towards those. You can do that here. So this will bring up all of the Vermeulen books you own, for example. Um, he, he, his books are one of my go-to when I'm quickly looking for something. Um, the other thing you can do is, um, which is what I do, is check for um, any of the reversed. Um, not sure if that will bring it up, but let's try. No, so it has to be. So you can bring up all of your reverse repertories. Um, the reliable has its own um, reversed, and we can do that. Um, that's also a place that I look more often. You will know which books are important to you and it's easy to find them. Um, the other thing here is because there is an abundance of material and uh, references, it is possible here in this three book icon to just limit what you want to look at. Um, Maybe you want to go back to original material and you just want to see provings, um, in which case you can do that and it will just bring up all of the provings that you have. Um, you can do the same thing for cases 
or journals if you want to look at natural history. And that way also, this is a way to organize the vast library you have and look for exactly what you're looking for. Um, this icon here is a filter. Um, I think Lucy used it briefly, but here you can order your books and your remedies, whichever one you prefer. Right now we're in the book view, but you could say, you know, I want to really just study from a particular family. Um, I'm studying the Solanaceae and I want to look at the books that talk about the Solanaceae. So you could do that. Um, you could, these are all the different kingdoms. As you see here, the filter um, comes in the bottom. So you could ap apply a filter um, this is a broad filter, animals, plants, minerals, um, imponderables, and so on. Another easy way is to go to the bottom where it says A to Z. And if you click that, then you, you can just type um, the family that you're thinking of um, and it will pop up and then you select it and hit apply. And now all of your books that you have here have entries on the Solanaceae family. Um, and you can read it this way. Um, the other way might be to look at the remedies you have and then apply the same filter, A to Z, and you type Solanaceae. And now you have all the Solanaceae remedies in your left pane. And you can study um, this in this way. Um, so this can be very useful, I think, for students. And even, even when you're researching and analyzing a case. Um, the other parts of the screen here. So um, we are, I think, currently still in, uh, we are in the journal. So let's go to um, Allen's, for example. And this search box here allows you to search within the book. Um, and so you could look for, let's say if you're looking for cough remedies, it tells you that there are seven uh, places in the book where the word cough appears. And you can look at where that is. Um, and you can use the arrows to go to the next reference and the next reference and the next reference. So you could use this box very nicely to search within a book. Um, these are bookmarks, um, and this was similar. Reference Works had this as well. You can use it um, to mark special places in special books or in different parts of references that you have been studying. Um, this is an ability to actually um, read and compare two books side by side, which I will um, show subsequently. Um, and um, I think this applies to um, if you have books and references in languages other than English. And I, since I only have English books, we will leave this as is. Um, there is a question mark in different parts of the screen uh, in different modules. And basically, if you use that, it will take you to the help manual. But I think most everyone uh, who has a program also has the help manual with them as a PDF, uh, which they can place on their desktop for easy reference. Um, but that's available in both places. So um, that's really um, the reference library. I'm going to do a short case after this um, just to show how we can use all the features of the reference library. Um, the second part of it that I'm gonna talk about um, is the global search. And it's a really, really powerful search engine. Um, it simultaneously searches all repertories and references for whatever search that you're doing. Um, in uh, earlier, because we had two programs, McRepertory had its own search functionality and ReferenceWorks had its own search functionality. And what SHS does is that it allows you to basically search simultaneously as if it would have done it in both programs. But in this case, since both programs are within this one software, you're actually searching everything. Um, 
and you have the ability to do multiple searches and keep them all on your screen so you can actually see minute differences between searches as you change filters or add things or take off things you can compare those um, and you can also any um, searches that you do are very easy to export to a clipboard and you can create multiple different clipboards with different searches um, you can combine them together as lucy showed how you can merge clipboards or you could have a rubrics a collection of rubrics and a reference works rubric together on the same clipboard and that really um, gives your um, your analysis a whole different level of depth and breadth um, that was not possible before or you know it was it was just a bit more tedious i think earlier and this program makes it so much easier and faster um, so I'm going to um, actually the global search is best displayed through a case, um, but I will just show you what the screen looks like. Um, so at the moment, because we don't have any search over here, it looks blank. Um, but in here, you can decide. You see the default is always going to be search in all your repertories and all your references. Um, but you can, you know, obviously unclick that if you just want to do a Materia Medica search, or you can unclick this if you just want to search in repertories. Um, over here is again, this is the filter. You have seen this before now multiple times. Um, this also allows you to select whether the filter you're applying is going to apply only to repertories or only to reference works. This is either or because the set of uh, filters is different for both. Um, in repertories, you can filter for um, repertories, which is, you know, your books, um, an author, kingdom, remedy, and section. And um, in a reference library, the um, filter is restricted to books, kingdom, remedy, and section. Um, as always, if you have a filter on, this button, this icon here will go red telling you that you have a filter on. Um, and here are some um, connectors which allow you to create your own customized rubric um, within uh, reference works or within the reference library portion to allow you to do a complex search. Um, this final icon here allows you to um, add synonyms or if you need help, uh, in terms of looking for similar words um, that you could do. So I think the best thing would be to show you a, a very short paper case and we try to analyze that and then you can see exactly everything that I've been talking about theoretically um, and we'll just do it in practice. Um, so this is a case of alopecia in a young woman who came to me um, she was, you know, very attractive, um, very dynamic, um, charismatic, talked, um, had a lot to say for herself. Um, and so I, you know, obviously there's, there's not enough time. So I've just kind of compressed what she said. Um, and she said that her main problem was that she was losing hair. Um, she had a bald spot a few months back, then the hair came, but now she, at the moment when she came, she has three bald spots. Um, and before the hair falls, um, she gets severe itching in her shins and it's only at night. And she says that it's unbearable, um, mostly on her extremities, sometimes on her stomach, but nothing really further up or into the chest or the face. Um, and, uh, the, you know, she had it checked out and nobody, they're not clear if it's eczema or psoriasis because originally it started as an eruption and then now, then later on there were flakes. Um, she says she loves to go out. Um, she always wants to be unique and she designs and makes her own dresses and she's a TV anchor and she's also a model and she loves to talk and really for the hour and a half maybe two that she was in there she talked non-stop um i could barely get a word in um 
And then later on, she says um, that she has a lot of anger and she would snap her fingers and say, I try and calm down through meditation, but it's really not helping at all. And some of the instances that make her um, lose it is like things like if someone is cutting the queue, you know, in, in a public place, I get angry. I don't care that it's public. If I'm calling customer support and they don't see my point, I start arguing and I argue and I argue and I argue and they have no answer. And then now when I call them back, they're shivering. Um, and if my husband says that the laundry is not done, that's enough. Everything I ever wanted to tell him, I will tell him. Um, that's my ego. I, I just can't keep quiet. Um, so, um, then she says, but all this anger is only inside my own house. All my friends, they never know that I have any anger. They think I'm the sweetest girl. Um, she's very scared of the dark and, um, she's also very scared of snakes. Um, she has dreams of snakes and she still has these dreams that a snake is going to come and eat her. Um, and she says that she cannot tolerate any hot. Um, she, she feels dizzy and, um, she, she can't stand it. It makes her itch come back. And, um, in, in most, in most general ways, she's not able to tolerate any heat. So with this case, um, you know, we can look at um, some, so what I want to show you is how you can use global search and reference library to, you know, look at the case really, really simply. And um, I, I don't want to do a whole lot of fancy rubrics or um, really get into the case in depth, but I want to show you how I looked at it. Um, and so, you know, what you can do is just go into, into um, reference works and type um, alopecia. And I'm specifically going to be searching in repertories because I want to show you how to get the, to the rubrics really quickly. Um, and when you do that, when you just type a single word search, basically it would because I just restricted it to repertories and we're going to focus on that, um, it's going to look for alopecia in all the repertories that you currently own in your program. Um, and you can look at those results and see what the different repertories have for alopecia. And um, so, you know, you can, you can pull out, you can look at other results. Maybe you had uh, a couple of rubrics in your mind, but what this does is it brings up every single rubric that's relating to alopecia. Um, and, it, you know, in this way, sometimes you look at other rubrics that you might not have considered. Um, and also because these repertories are right here and I don't always consult all of them, but it invites me to say, okay, maybe look at Allen's or look at Boraki and see what they have uh, on alopecia. And, you know, this, this is what I meant by a little bit by serendipity where it, you know, you, it, it helps you become familiar with other repertories or books that you may not have considered. Um, so in this case, you know, I'm going to just use a bigger rubric or maybe let's go to, um, the 11, which is not as big. And then this is the one that I want to just talk about um, and use maybe. So when I highlight this and I can double click it, um, it takes me to that exact rubric. Um, so I can look in here and I can see which rubrics I'm interested in. Um, I could, you know, possibly ask her where her ball spots are and all of that, but I want to keep it a little bit broader. And once you've decided what your rubric is, if you double click it, it takes you exactly to where that rubric is. Um, and if you hit enter, um, it will just, you know, create a clipboard with that rubric. Um, and then we can basically go back to search and one of the other very critical pieces of her case was her loquacity. 
Um, and that's a simple rubric, uh, you know, mind loquacity. I think all of us know that. But I think just because I want to see what else can come up, um, I can do that. And if I just want to restrict this to mind, then I can type in M I N. And you see here, it gives you certain suggestions. Uh, but what you can do is you can think about um, looking for loquacity in the minerals family. You can think about looking for loquacity just in the mind section um, instead of in any other place. And right now, I'm only interested in the mind section. So instead of having it pull up loquacity rubrics, all over the repertory. I'm going to restrict it just by typing M-I-N-D. And you see what it does, it makes the section filter blue. So this is a very easy way to apply this filter. The other way would be to go here, right? And then um, we're looking at repertories and you could go to section and you could go to mind. And this is a few more clicks, right? Um, so we could, I mean, we could do that as well, but I find that when I know if I'm looking for a section or a remedy I, or a family even, and it's a one word search, then I just <clears throat> type it up here and it will do that search for me without doing the extensive filter. So now what it does is it brings up all the mind rubrics relating to loquacity in all the different repertories that um, this rubric might exist. Um, and you know, you can you can look at there's there's a lot of other interesting things here, jealousy, loquacity with, loquacity at different times of the day, um, you know, connected to the kind of talk. Um, and there's a lot of rubrics. So you can you can look at this up. You, if you had, you know, some other ideas about loquacity, we could do that as well. But at the moment, I'm going to do this and just go here. And here's my rubric and I can just hit enter. And there's a little two now. So, and the other thing we could do, which I think I, yes, I changed. So, the other thing I could do is where you could um, keep all your searches. Um, so the other uh, big aspect of this case that I um, repertorized is um, dreams within one word of snakes. If you type a space between two words, then the program interprets that as within one word. Um, and it will find that. If you want to keep all your old searches, and I let go of the alopecia search, but if you want to keep all of your old searches so that you can then look at them towards the end, all you have to do is hit the plus button. And then it creates a separate tab here for every search. Um, and you can see you get all of the, the dreams of snakes rubrics in all of the repertories. So right now my default is the reliable. So both here and in here in my search, reliable is always gonna come up, but um, you can always go into user preferences and change your defaults to whichever repertory or reference that you prefer. And then that will be the one that will be at the top. Um, so we're just going to, again, quickly select that one. Um, the other thing that I want to put on here is deceitful. Um, and we can do the same thing again, or we can see what comes up if we don't restrict it to the mind section. Um, And see, you have my you, in reliable, you have mind deceitful. And then in the complete, you see mind deceitful sly as a different rubric that you might want to consider. 
Um, we can look and see what Allen says or um, what Boninghausen says. And there are you know, different ways that you can look and see what comes up for deceitful. Um, the reason I choose that is because um, this patient has a quality that is very intrinsic part of her, but she hides it from everybody else other than her family. And of course, the people that you know end up seeing her anger. Um, and so I want to choose this in one of my key characters. Um, and so we're just gonna put this also into the clipboard. Um, a couple of other um, rubrics to consider might be something about her itch. Um, we could talk about itching night and see what's available. Um, and now you see that it's going to come up in all the different sections where itching and night. So now, um, you know, there's two ways. If you're just going to do the search, you could go in here and, and um, go into section. And I want to just restrict this to skin. And I hit apply. And you see now all of the um, rubrics that come up are within the skin section and all of them have itching at night. Um, and you can, you can go through and see if any of these work and then you can choose them. And in fact, you can choose whichever rubrics from whichever repertory appeal to you. They don't always have to be from the first repertory that's at the top. Um, so I'm going to just stay here with the reliable and um, choose this. And then the one other thing I would like to put on is um, the fact that um, heat aggravates her. Um, and so I think that I would like to look in generalities and see if that comes up as a possibility. Yes, it does. So you see here, it says generality section. And I want to do that and hit the plus sign. And if I look in generalities, you can see there are a lot of heat rubrics. So it would be much better to maybe refine that in some way instead of looking through so many heat rubrics. Um, so another way to do this might be to think of, let me do this. Let's do that. And then we can filter this again by section. And see what comes up now. So now it's a much more manageable list. And in fact, the rubric that I was thinking of is right here. Um, and so we can just quickly add this. And I think that based on, you know, based on the material that we have, I mean, we can talk about her personality or her love of clothes and, um, um, all of the public um, public career uh, choices that she has made in which she is on stage. 
Um, but I think that these um, rubrics that we have so far um, capture her, her chief complaint, her mind situation, her concomitants, and there's a generality that we got from her. Um, and you can see the repertorization. And the first remedy that comes up is lachesis. Um, and I was, that was not the first remedy I was thinking of, but I was definitely thinking based on what we see uh, about the patient and the case and the energy that comes from the case that she did seem very much like um, an animal remedy and possibly a, a, a snake remedy. Um, so as Lucy demonstrated, you know, we could do some filters here to look at what different animal remedies come up. Um, we could also, if we are thinking of possibly the subgrouping of snakes, um, the other way to look at this and filter this analysis is to go here and look at the family of the remedy. And when you do that, you can get um, the, the family of that remedy from different, you know, levels. So you can look at Massimo. There are other ways to look at that remedy in different groupings. Um, there is a miasm grouping. Um, different authors and master homeopaths have looked at it in different ways. You know, we have Rajan, we have uh, Raj Pitcairn. Um, we have animalia, so you know, which is what we did over here. But then under animals, you have different subgroupings as well. You know, you could you could filter this repertorization with just vertebrates or with reptiles. Um, the one that I was thinking of was snakes. Um, and there is even a subgrouping within snakes. You could look at the crotality snakes. Um, what I'd like to do is just see what would happen if I looked at what other snake remedies there were. Um, and you can see that there was a fair amount of snake remedies that come up. Um, the other thing you might want to do is um, look at this remedy in the reference library. Um, and then when you do that, it actually takes you to um, the first available reference here. Um, for lachesis. Um, and if you go here, um, I want to show you These are all the available references. And you can see that the first one is the acute reverse from the acute reverse. Um, but let's say that you prefer to read, you know, another reference. Um, it could be Clark's, it could be Dewey. Um, I'm going to go to the complete reverse um, and you can then see if some of the symptoms and signs that your patient mentioned are in all of these different sections. Um, you could also um, just, you know, if you want to compare, uh, see what else somebody else is saying about it. And um, you could open this in a new tab. Um, you could look at <clears throat> maybe Guernsey has said something interesting. Um, and another very interesting thing you could do here is what I had mentioned, where you can actually compare two different books side by side. And you could see what Guernsey is saying about lachesis versus what Farrington is saying about lachesis. Um, that's, that's one way to say, okay, you know, maybe let me maximize my information and different authors may have di emphasized different aspects about this remedy. And you can actually see that side by side and read and see. Um, and that, you know, just gives you a better insight into the remedy that you're considering. 
Another thing that you might want to consider is um, to go back to your repertorization. And you can show, um, we were looking at animal remedies. Actually, then if you want to compare You want to say, I want to compare Lachesis and Sancris side by side. So we could do that as well. Um, you know, you could. Let's say you want to do. Read the two in. And then let's see if any of them have, you could do <clears throat> Yeah. And so we have Lachesis on Vermeulen. And then you could go back and look for Sencris. Um, and you could compare the two. And you could say, which one fits my case better? Um, there are some things about Lachesis that make sense, but there are some things about Sencris that make sense. Um, and the program here allows you to do that. You can um, look at your results, you can get the um, rubrics very quickly, and you can then look at the analysis and filter it in different ways. Um, so this is one way that you could do the analysis. The other way, and I'm going to just clear out all of the limits here and go back. And these are all your different, you know, if you wanted to ever go back and look at, you could always look at all your searches and see if there was anything different in the way that you picked your rubrics, uh, but it's all there. You don't lose it until you decide to close out of that case. Um, the other very easy way to look at this case would be to do like a complex, unique rubric in reference works, like a search. Um, and that could just be something. So I'm using the space bar um, after typing alopecia. If you type the space bar, it takes you to uh, sentence, paragraph, section and remedy. And so what I'm going to do is say, ask the program to look for alopecia um, in the same remedy as loquacity, in the same remedy as itching within two words of night, um, in the same remedy as um, fear, or let's use dreams within two words of snakes. Um, and we could just run this search as is. Um, and you see, initially we were looking at repertories. And so this was limited to repertories. However, this is not a search or a rubric that could ever be found in any repertory. So you have to be very clear when you type a complex search, a repertory result will never come in and it will always give you the choice to refer to the reference library result tab because this is a search that would be part of references. So now I'm going to do this and I'm going to say, okay, and I'm going to do a second search. 
And so when I do that exact same search in references, you get 33 remedies with 2,571 references. Um, as you can see, that was fairly quick for it to re return that result. Um, and right now, the 33 remedies are going to look very similar to the kind of um, you know, overall result we had over here. Um, but the one thing that by this time that I'm fairly certain of is that I'm looking at the snake um, uh, subkingdom or grouping, then what I might want to do is to see what happens when I filter this search for that subkingdom. Um, and again, one can start with the animal kingdom and work their way down, um, you know, from here. But if you if you know the way that it would go down from vertebrata all the way down. But what I find easy is to go just to A to Z and type serpents and it comes up and you hit apply. And now this search for this case to look for a remedy is filtered by looking for a remedy within the snake subgrouping. And if I hit the plus sign, it gives me a third search. So see, all my old searches are still here. And now I have this third search, and there are only three remedies um, with 720 references. And the three remedies are um, Crotalus horridus, Lachesis, and there's a lot of Lachesis references. You know, given that it's one of the most overrepresented remedies in the Materia Medica, I'm not surprised. And then the third one is nausea. And what we can do here is you can take either search, the more general search or the filtered search. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just create a second clipboard and I'm going to click this button to export the search. You see, and the search comes here and you can look at it. So this is the filtered search. Um, and there are fewer remedies in here than when we looked at this search and limited it by the family. We got seven remedies there. Um, and so you can argue which one is a more pointed and sharper search. The other thing to do might be also, you might be interested, is to create a third clipboard and export this search over. And now your third clipboard with this complex rubric is in here. And you'll see this is a more general uh, search. And now if you like, you could um, do this and see. And so you have, what is it, eight remedies and you have three snakes. So I think it's fairly certain you can, so these are different ways where you can look at your case and say, okay, I'm, am I heading in the right direction? And can I get a handful of remedies that seem right? And then can I go in and research those remedies um, in this way to see which one is actually the right remedy? Um, so um, I think I think that that really shows it's a it's a straightforward case, but I chose many different ways in which to analyze, and how you could quickly create you could you could use global search to find the rubrics that you're looking for and create a repertorization, or you could create a more complex search within the reference library and go straight to a result that's not so far different. Um, and look at both sorts of analysis and bring it all together um, and, and, and find the right remedy for your patient. Um, I think with that, I'm uh, going to um, close uh, my presentation. And if there are any questions, I'm happy to take questions. And in fact, this is a really good point because at this point, I would um, you know, after questions, I would want to hand over to Dr. Paresh, and he can, he's really going to talk about 
the synergy of analysis and using many different approaches within the program to arrive at the best, right, accurate, consistent result for your patient. Thank you. Do we have questions, Rupadi? I don't think so, Dr. Parish. I think what we can do is maybe move on to your portion of the presentation and then just handle all the questions at the end. Okay. So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. In my presentation, I'm going to talk about synergy of art and science. We have a lot of information available to us in different repertories and different Materia Medicas. Like if I'm reading a simple remedy like Pulsatilla, it's going to be two, three, four hundred books which will have information about it. And it's going to be thousands of rubrics which will have information. But how do I use this information? That's the art. I'm sure none of us would read all 200 books, Pulsatilla Remedy from every book. So how do I search what is needed? What is the right one for me? And that is the art. So the challenge for us is to create a software which will do this synergy of artistic use of information. So your knowledge, your information, which is there in your repertories, which is there in your books, in an artistic way, we can use it. And my colleagues Rupali and Lucy presented how do we use repertory, how do we use library of books, and how do we use search. I'm going to emphasize, go further on another aspect of synergy, and that is synergy of traditional methods with the new developments. So before that, I would talk about three main principles that we talk about. And that is accuracy, flexibility, and the synergy of methods. Whichever method we use, whatever tool we use, whether we use repertory, whether we use Materia Medica, or a different method, it has to be accurate. It should bring us to the closest remedy possible. And I should have the flexibility to use different tools and also the ability to combine them together. So that brings me to this work of reliable repertory. Dr. Rajan spoke about it. My colleagues, they spoke about it. It was year 2009 and 10. That's when we thought of creating or we wanted to have a repertory. 
Dr. Rajan spoke about our software VitalQuest, and we needed a repertory to integrate into VitalQuest. Because a patient may need some references from repertory. So when we examined different repertories, we realized that there is a lot of lacunae. There's a lot of lacking in our existing repertories. So let me show you that. So this is our reliable repertory. You see all the sections which we are very familiar with. Now, what is very unique? How did we start about it? Is first we started Kent as base. Our base repertory is Kent's repertory. So the rubric structure, the sections, and everything you will see formatted on Kent's repertory. And then we added different pioneers repertory like Boningers and Ellen, Clark's repertory, Fartex repertory, Nez repertory, and all the pioneers work we added into it. In the next step, we also added information from the books. So we have library, huge library of all the books, the old pioneers books and the new books. So we created a special software which would search for a rubric and then our students and homeopaths would read through each reference and then whatever is appropriate would be added into the rubric. So just as an example, if I have abrupt as a rubric in front of me, so they would search every book for word abrupt or something that means abrupt. It's a very difficult work and a very long work. But one big advantage of that was that we got the exact meaning of each remedy. So here, if you see, you get the exact sentence from the book where the word abrupt was there. And that's the reason this remedy was added into a rubric abrupt. And this is exactly how you can read from different books and a different remedies. And that's why one of the question that was asked is what is the meaning of this asterisk that you see on the remedies? And you see, it is not on every remedy. It's only there on some of the remedies. So the percentage of remedies, I would say around 40%, 30 or 40% remedies have this kind of asterisk. In the next phase, what we did was we added provings, new provings, recent remedies. So we started with pioneers, then all the material medica books, and then the provings. And let me tell you, this work is on and on and on. We have different teams. We have collaborated with different teachers, and we keep adding those remedies. Different teachers, Massimo's work, their editions, Andresen's MMPP group, their additions, all this keeps getting added into it. Well, our focus is not on providing you 200 or 300 or more number of remedies in each rubric, but the quality of the additions. So if I would say there are 80 remedies, you'll be able to see that those remedies are supported either by pioneers or a strong Matira Medica reference or a strong proving. So this gives it the quality. Let's go to the next point. So accuracy, we spoke about it. And the next point is the flexibility. Well, the basic principle of our homeopathy is individualization. And, and that applies everywhere. It's not about finding the right remedy for the patient, but also each patient is different. Approach to each case is very different. And we have so many schools of homeopathy. 
somebody would stick to repertory somebody would stick to mathematica and somebody would follow different other methods like sensation method or other teachers and their needs their demands and their methods are very very different and that's why it's very important for us to provide you with tools where even if you look at only rubrics there are different strategies on rubrics so my colleague lucy showed you like how we use highest rubric or highest grade or different families or small remedies like this i would also show you some methods by which you can do analysis according to hanneman's method according to boninger's analysis method or kentian way or boger's analysis so following our pioneers but there are recent advances like dr rajan's sensation and synergy or jan schulten's minerals and plants massimo's work and there are so many other teachers are coming up so we must have this kind of flexibility to use either an individual method or to follow some teacher or still better to create your own analysis strategy so how do we do it so i just have a clipboard here and my colleague has shown you the clipboard she also showed you this part of it there is one functionality here is setting this is a place where you can play with various strategies and you can give higher or lower marks to a different strategy i will not go into the depth of it here but there are other methods by which we can do it so i'll show you those other methods and that is this family graph in this family graph it's first of all it's a visual delight you will enjoy seeing the result in a kind of a graph so there is a pie chart that's available to you so in this case so we have 155 so the plants represented animals other kingdoms minerals and you can go further if you want to examine plants then it tells you looking at plants classification in a different way suppose if i want to see kingdom classification of plants and cronquist method yes it could be asteridy that's possible if i go further it tells me the orders are and then it tells me the family and when i click on it so in my repertorial graph this are the solanaceae family put a reset go back and you can go back and forth so it shows you the relationship of different hierarchies of a plant and plant why only in a cronquist way so we if we go and if we go into plant overview you will see dalgrins homeopathic cronquist method apg2 apg4 plant parts or different teachers that's what we were talking so shorten's method understanding massimo's work was here massimo is upgrading his work so currently this information is not given here dr rajan's plant 1 plant 2 plant 3 mikhail yaki's work so you can open them and read and study more about it so i'm just examining dr rajan's plants and you can see the different color grades are according to the representation of it and the same you can examine mineral kingdom so mineral kingdom if you want to see your analysis as per jan schulten or as per dr rajan's rows and columns this is our traditional periodic table morrison's organics massimo's work this is how different teachers work you can see if i want to see shorten's work like this 
I can see different color shades representing it and I can click on it and restrict my graph or I can simply click and read the information about the remedy. So if I want to read about sulfur, just some nutshell you can read here and you can go back to different ones. Animals. My animal kingdom. And I can, I can see the whole hierarchy and I can go further right up to the source and then I can think about it. And you can see right up to the rubrics. Like what are the dog family remedies here? So going back, so there is a possibility where you can approach it from the kingdom point of view. So the mineral kingdoms, plants, animals. Let's talk about miasms. So what is there in the miasm? So you can apply the same filters according to traditional miasms or Rajan Shankaran's miasms, plant miasms or HFM method. So different methods of applying filters according to miasms. You can look at fungi kingdom, archetypes, color preferences, or you can examine according to different teachers. If I click here and you see Dr. Rajan's his mineral themes, his rows, columns, plants, animals. So you have a wide flexibility of studying it in that. Well, this we are talking right now is we have selected rubrics or we have put something in our clipboard from material medical search or repertory search or rubrics. That's where we are applying. But suppose I don't know how to do it, how to put rubrics into it. What do I do? So then we have another module and that's called insight or a case taking, which and this offers you different flexibility. So either we use the repertory, we use Materia Medica search or Materia Medica and put it into clipboard. Sometimes we do a therapeutic approach where you simply select a clinical condition and then you approach the case. So suppose I have a patient with cough, the type of cough is asthmatic cough then it guides me what is a rubric that's possible in the case. So it, what is software doing is it's prompting you to think in this direction. This is very useful for students and for the beginners where they are even learning case taking method. And that's where we have this format approach. So what's the format approach? It's exactly works on the basis of analysis and evolution of the case that we do. So what we do, okay, what is patient's chief complaint? Patient came to me with complaint of falling off hair. And then it keeps asking you, okay, if it's falling off hair is a complaint, where is the hair fall maximum located? What is the frequency of complaint? Is there any peculiarity in age? Is there any concomitant? Is there any aggravation, any causes? So you know, my questions can be framed on it. And there are hints given here with respect to either rubrics. So suppose I can select this as a rubric. If I want to select, simply click here. Or sometimes there are words which are used. So suppose if I want to say, so then there are remedies. So either in the form of words, in the form of rubrics or in the form of remedies. So let's go and show you another example. Here, suppose patient had past history of cancer. 
so then you see the hint is in the form of words and when you select something all the rubrics that you select would go and get added into create totality screen so we we'll talk about it later so when i go into chief complaint associated complaints past history family history the treatment that patient has received anything about patient as a person his food cravings and i can simply click and go further or anything in the mind patient will talk about emotions or something about fear and anxiety related or anxiety stress and tension and you see there is a guide here in the form of a rubric of course we can't give you all the rubrics of anxiety or fear because there'll be thousand rubrics so this is just a guide and you can select them and a patient will give you 10 or 15 or 20 symptoms now we have to create a totality from this so the question is if patient has given me all this which one is important for me and what is a grade what is a degree so if i feel that this was the very intense particular symptom i can select i can i can increase the grade if i feel all of them are important i can add them and it get directly added into the clipboard if i feel this word was also very important i can simply select that and export that word to clipboard so word is added to the clipboard so what happens automatically the search the word is searched in the whole of reference library and then it will get added into our clipboard you see the number is changed to 6 and now when i go to see my result my result was earlier my two rubrics and these are the rubrics which i added later and this is a word search and so my result is reflected here so this is how this can help students to take the case and integrate rubrics material medical search therapeutics now let's move a step further and we see that how is other expert system can be integrated and that can happen in the form of teams or a text approach now this text approach is currently is based on the sensation method but in future this will also be available to use to for massimo's method or for jan schulten's method and different teachers like roger morrison massimo jan schulten dr shankaran's work all this will become a part of the text approach and you can integrate different methods so currently the sensation method is integrated here and suppose patient gives me some sensation the experience of the case and that that experience that he had was feeling of tightness choked feeling what do i do i simply type type here feeling of tightness moment i press enter it will search all the themes of tight in different kingdoms and it will show you the possibilities here those who are very familiar with vital pace they know this as word groups i can select all of them here i can select them and it gets added into my totality screen so you see my this thing of tightness is added here if i want to add this to clipboard simply click here and you see the number is changed to 7 now that's added into added as a sensation analysis it gets added here 
And the change that happens because we added sensation, the result changes into the sub kingdoms. Earlier we were seeing was the remedies and now it shows me the families, the sub kingdoms. And when I want to go further, I double click and then it shows me the source, the remedies again. So this is how you can integrate repertory, Materia Medica and sensation together in the same analysis. Let's look at another part and that's the information. The vital quest notes or the information about different families, which is very important. If I want to know what are the sensations of different sub kingdoms of animals like mammals, birds, reptiles, spiders, just click on it and it gives you complete information about all the mammal remedies. The different remedies are mentioned here. And if you go further, there's natural information about mammals. And then what are the sensations of mammals? So mammals has need to belong to a group, issue of hierarchy, strong maternal instinct, all this are listed here. And then there are examples. So in patients, how will you see the sensation or an experience of mammal? So there are case examples. So this is not only about mammals, but if I want to read a specific mammal remedy, let's say, for example, let's go. I want to read about lac defloratum. Again, you'll have the same information, the natural history of the source, the cow, what are their sensations? You'll see the whole information here. What are the patient's expressions? How will you find it in patients? All the details. And this is not only about mammals. You can also read about mollusks, insects, spiders, reptiles. So Rupali's case about reptiles. And if I want to read more about it, you have turtles, you have crocodiles, dinosaurs, lizards, and then you have family elapity and snakes, different snakes. So all this information and we keep updating this information. Well, when you go to plants, we have plants, different works. So Dr. Rajan's old work, different plant families, which are given here. His new work of plant families is not being added because you still, it's work in progress. And once that will be completely ready, it will be included here. And about each family, if you want to read, you simply click on the family like Ranunculaceae. Again, you will get the exact information of what exactly is the sensation the information about it and different remedies. So I can click on this remedy and then go into the information about this remedy. And always there would be case examples to tell you what is it. Mineral Kingdom, you can read the sensation of the remedies here, either each row, each row or each column and individual remedies. And there is information here with examples, with cases. You can read about nozodes. Different nozodes. Sarcodes. Other kingdoms. Imponderables. Miasms. You can read about miasms here. There are cases the philosophical work. So every information is here and we can read about this.
Okay, let me demonstrate this whole process with the help of a case. Yeah, it's a very small case. It's a case of a chalazion. A young lady, she came up with this complaint. Now, what is chalazion? It's a cyst in the eyelid due to a blocked oil gland. They're typically in the middle of the eyelid, red, non-painful, which usually follows a sty. It becomes hardened, hardened oil blocking the gland, and sometimes it even gets calcified. So this girl, she came and she started saying that this is not curable. I didn't want to come here for the treatment, but my parents forced me. I've totally lost hopes. I don't think anything can be done about it. She had taken different medicines, homeopathic medicines. She had done surgery once, but the styes kept coming back. Chalazions kept coming back. So the modern medicine doctor suggested that stop working on computer, stop doing this, stop doing that. Her problem was she could not wear contact lenses. She has to wear spectacles. And she feels this is affecting her personality. It's affecting my physical look. It was a long case, but if I have to summarize, there was one very intense situation that happened in her life. And that was there was one job opportunity that came to her. She appeared for the interview, but she couldn't take the right decision. Should I join this new job or continue with the old one? Because I see the plus point of it and the negative of it. And I can't take the decision. I get stuck in the middle. I can't take the right decision in my life. I think in both the ways. Also, for me, it's not very easy, easy to adjust in any environment. How people mold themselves according to situations, according to work. But for me, it's very difficult. And there was a gesture that she used. So I asked, what is mold? So she said the spontaneous answer that comes to me is like how potters they are making pots and how they mold according to that they give a shape according to the idea they have in their mind she also said people when they ask me a particular question like what's my choice i get very conscious i get speechless i can't answer that If you ask me five things which you like, I don't have an answer. I go blank. I'm not able to express myself. It's like if I have to fill up something like slam book, where you know the questions like, who are you? What do you like? I'm speechless. I'm very confused. People can understand me, but I cannot understand myself. I'm a very confused person because I take things in both the ways, negative and positive. So, of course, the remedy I gave her, gave her and the change that was seen was amazing. The chalazion, which was very hard, gradually got resolved. No more styes. But the most beautiful change that happened was in her state, where we could see that her state got diluted. The irresolution greatly improved with the remedy. So we use different approaches. We can show you here. So one of the approaches, you can simply go into chief complaint and I and Chalazion, and you can select the right rubric that appears. That's one way. 
or you take that rubric along with that you add the sensation of identity and there it shows you that identity sensation has this two word rubrics and then you put them into create totality and from here it goes into the clipboard and you see r3 that means the row 3 is one of all of them have two two rubrics in two marks row 3 is one of the options if you look at just simply only rubrics like thickening of eyelids thickening of tarsi or styes recurrent and you see this is the result or you want to take three rubrics and you add sensation analysis again it would show you alumina group and different sub classification there's another way which i have not demonstrated which i would like you to see and that is the sensation repertory so if you go into the repertory module and if you see one of the repertory that we have is sensation repertory where you see sensations are given as a repertory so you can simply use this as a rubric and add that into your clipboard and analyze it so there are different options like this and you can see okay we spoke about the charts so there is then there are two more things that we want i we want to speak about is the patient management that's given here there is a detailed patient management where you can put patients information personal data different sessions different history you can open and enter all the details that is there save those details and study them for in future there is one aspect which i would like to talk about and that is the aspect of channels as dr rajan in his talk he mentioned about our company is not just to do with the software it has also to do with education it is also to do with community because how many cases will i see in my life what's going to be my experience with each remedy but what if i find a case which is very unusual and which requires a remedy which is not very well proved or suppose we were talking about the work we are doing in reliable repertory where each remedy in each rubric we give the reference string where we mark that yes this is confirmed so what we have to do is we have to work together as community and recently our corona virus thing where our community can work together share their experience together so this is the place where we have created a feature of social connect we have created a forum where you can put your question where you can put your comments where you can share something with your colleagues and ask them their experience another aspect is mentorship homeopathy is an art and when somebody guides you you grow much faster you share and you learn from their experience so mentorship is another feature that we are offering we have hope which is our homeopathy online portal for education where there are different videos about different topics from different teachers are there and this from where you can learn so education learning sharing and various strategies and analysis and information this is how this whole product is and well just 
last few sentences there's too much of work ahead there there are so many things that we can do further and it's not just me or my team that we all are working together but we all have to work together to make and our homeopathy go ahead and help our patients better and that's why this channels or the social connect is an important part of it thank you very much if you have any questions you're most welcome to ask us we are open all three of us with any part of it please let us know so um dr prish uh, lucy and i all three of us will now take questions some questions have already been sent um i'm going to i think if all of us are okay i'd like to request that uh, dr prish and lucy we share uh well, or we make our webcams active so we can connect um yeah. with our audience Hi. So, um, Lucy, do you want to start with your questions? I do have a message from the organizers that we have to finish at 1.55. So it is now 1.33 my time, which means 22 minutes. Um, we have some important questions that have come in. We have some, a few, very few important announcements um, and we want to um, take those as well. So Lucy, if there's one or two questions that have come to you that you Absolutely. want to handle. Um, I, will, I will put my screen on if somebody will send me that message to share my screen. Yeah, I think I have that. So Amul will have to do that. There Thank we you. go. I got it. Okay. And so I'll go into my program. All right. One person asked, um, First of all, they wondered why calcarea was in the animal category. And I just wanted to show that, for instance, here in Clark's dictionary. And Clark's dictionary talks about how it's a tituration of the middle layer of oyster shells. Um, so that's why. That was an easy one, quick one. I'm going to go back into the uh, clipboard, actually. I'm going to go to my clipboard that I created earlier. And somebody asked, how do you grade rubrics? And again, you right click on it. So right click and you can grade it down here. You choose um, if it's a super strong symptom, four, three, you know, it's a pretty solid symptom to um, so on. So that's, that's again, how you grade, you right click the rubric. Somebody asked, um, what are the benefits of merging rubrics again? And um, so if you have like three rubrics that represent the same idea, you combine them into one, into one rubric so that that particular symptom is not overemphasized in your analysis. Um, that's, that's really the main reason to combine rubrics. Um, okay, somebody asked me to show the elimination again. You simply click here, this icon here. And so you pick a rubric. There are certain rubrics that are very, very important to your case. And you want to be sure that one of the remedies that you, the, the, the remedy that you pick is in that rubric. So that's what I did here. Uh, I thought that the aversion to her husband was the, a very significant, uh, characteristic symptom and so I turned that to a minus sign and then what I'm looking at is I'm making sure that every single rubric uh, every single remedy that's in that rubric is up front um, okay and then I'm just looking at another question that came in uh, and so what's the difference between this and grading here it's a subtle difference. Um, two of my, my other colleagues can, can talk about this as well. But basically, um, 
you know, this got the high grade because it's the main symptom of the case. I could, I could have, uh, I could certainly grade the aversion to husband. Uh, you know, it, it's just your choice. I could have also graded that, given that a nice high grade. So it's, you know, it's just your choice, however you want to do it. Um, what else? Oh, what do the different colors mean? So one, again, it, they correlate with the grades. One um, is not as strong as four, which is one is the light blue, four is the black. Again, I'm gonna, someone was wondering where the numbered graph is again, it's right here. And so you can turn on the numbered graph. And so basically what that four means is that calcarea um, for stomach acidity, it, it showed up in most of the provers, like the people who have proven this remedy, the large majority of them got stomach acidity. Uh, the one, um, not nearly as many, but some provers, you know, for natrium carbonicum have the nighttime Erectations, etc. So really, this this grading symptom has to do with how how strongly, how much the remedy was, um, how much that symptom came out in the provers. Uh, a quick thing: right clicking on Mac, you have to hold the control key down as you click. That's how you right click on a Mac. Uh, and I think that's pretty much the questions that I got. So. I can turn it over to either Rupali or Dr. Paresh for, for some more questions on their areas. Yeah. Um, okay, so um, I have a few questions. Um, one is that if, if the filter is applied, do I then see the filter um, on my screen? And um, actually, once the filter is applied, you don't see what the filter is that you applied, you only see that a filter has been applied. Um, and so you know that there is a filter in place. Um, if you forget the filter, um, you can go back and, and look for it. Um, I think it shows um, if, if what the filter is. Um, oh, I deselected everything, but yeah. If, if it, you can go in here and it says view selected, see at the bottom of the box, it says view selected. You can go in here and look at what your filter is. But nowhere on the screen actually will it show what the filter is. It will only show that you have in fact applied a filter. Um, can you tell me what a reverse repertory is? Yes. Um, so a repertory is a collection of all the remedies that appear in the rubrics for the different chapters, right? A reverse repertory is the extraction of all the rubrics for a particular remedy, for a single remedy. So um, for example, let me show you. Um, so if we go to the reliable reverse repertory um, and I will just put, I mean, let's, let's do a common one. Um, if you look at aconite, if you pull up, so you can pull up a single remedy. And what this has done is from the reliable repertory, it has pulled up every single rubric that aconitum appears in. Um, in the mind section, those are all the mind rubrics for aconite. Um, and you can see there are quite a few. Um, but you can also, you know, open... Um, your navigation here, and you can just go and see. So for each section, you will get the rubrics in that section for that one single remedy. And so it's a really good way to study a remedy um, because then you can see exactly all the rubrics that that remedy appears in. Um, let's see, next question. Uh, when reading a book cover to cover, can I mark the place where I stopped reading to easily find it later to continue reading? Absolutely. Um, let me quickly show you how that's done. Um, so we are in remedies. 
Now we go back to books actually. And then let's say you are a book I was often reading during school um, for a quick a check was Morrison's desktop. Let's say you got to, and you were revising for an exam, let's say you got to Burrito Carb, and then you want to stop and you can just use this bookmark function here. Go to add, um, choose a color, whatever you like, mine is set for green, and say OK. And you'll see that um, there's a green bookmark up here now. Um, and then you could possibly close the book, you know, um, open another book. Um, and then um, let's say if you go back, you see the book opens at the first remedy. Um, you go back to your bookmarks and you say view. And you see your bookmark that you placed is here. Any bookmark that you place in the book, and you can do multiple bookmarks and multiple books, will show up in all your bookmarks. You choose the one that you want and you open it and it goes back to Burrito Carb where you were originally. Um, so yes, I mean, that's that's possible. You can have multiple books you're going through at any given moment and, and bookmarks and all of them. Um, you say you can search within a book. What about search in all reference library or do you have to open all books? Um, it depends on what your search term is, but this, the, this search bar here, the global search, really searches everywhere, right? Um, so yes, you can search in your entire reference library. It just depends what you're looking for. And the broader the search, the more the results will be and possibly less useful. Um, so you really have to put some parameters in your search to look for what it is that you're, um, you know, looking for. Um, there were a couple of other questions relating to the program itself um, that I want to pull up. Um, will this program sync with the patient management with that of McRepertory and reference works? So this is a very good question. Um, all of the, so what, when we were deciding um, to do this, we did a short survey and it turns out that there are very few and, and apologies to the people who do, but turns out in the survey that there were a very, very small number of homeopaths who actually save cases in reference works. Um, by far, the majority of homeopaths that save cases do so in McRepertory. And so what we are going to be doing and, and have done, we're just waiting for everybody around the world to receive their program. Once that's done, we're going to be sending out a case converter utility. And basically that will take your McRepertory cases and make them readable to SHS. Because right now the programs are written with two different sets of code and language and technology, and they don't talk to each other. So we, we have to send you something that makes your McRepertory cases readable by SHS. And at that point, you can import them into SHS and they will basically all go in here in patient management as your cases over here. Um, and you can view your patients and you can start working with them on um, within SHS. Um, actually, one of uh, the people that I was helping with asked recently if then those cases could go back into McRepertory and be worked on. And, and I'm going to tell you that that is not possible. Um, you can't take your worked upon cases in SHS and then export them back into McRepertory. Um, you can keep your cases in McRepertory and work on them independently, and you can bring them into SHS and work on them independently. But the work that you do in each program with cases will not talk to each other. Um, so those will kind of evolve on their own if you end up keeping two sets of files. Um, and the other question that's related to this is, can I safely upgrade to Catalina before receiving this case converter utility? And um, I'm going to say that it is not advisable for you to upgrade to Catalina. Um, our experience with Catalina so far and the way it's reacting with both um, McRepertory and ReferenceWorks and with SHS is that, you know, it 
it makes some irreversible changes and then we're not able to access the data. So if your um, program is on a computer that upgrades to Catalina, then there is no way to open up McRepertory and reference works and access those cases anymore. Um, so it is much better. Um, it shouldn't be long. We advise you to just wait um, and hold on till you get that case converter utility, safely transfer your cases, and then, then you're welcome to upgrade at that point. Um, those are all the questions that I have. Um, Dr. Paresh, um, are there any others that so just there's a very small technical question. So can I work offline and store everything in my computer? Yes, you can store all your cases in your computer. There's no problem about this. Oh, and there was, I think there was a related so question other times, uh, Dr. Paresh, that um, people, you know, in, uh, in uh, recent updates, McRepertory has gotten hooked to iCloud and people were not able to then work with McRepertory. And I wanted to let everyone know that with SHS, there are no issues with working on iCloud or um, putting things on iCloud, um, other parts of your you know, desktop or documents. There's no connection and SHS should work fine. So, um, Mamul, yes. could you um, allow me to screen share, please? Because I do have one or two other things that I want to mention. I really want to acknowledge all of the people who have helped make this possible. I know um, Dr. Rajan and Dr. Paresh alluded to all of our patrons and mentors and supporters um, who have helped make this program become what it is. Um, I also want to thank all our customers um, who've supported us by purchasing the program and um, trusting that the upgrade will deliver on all their needs. Um, we hope you find it so, and um, we couldn't do it without you. In fact, um, I think all of us have talked about how this is a not a software, it's, it's a movement and it's a community. And I really, really ask for your support and participation as you learn the program and as you go through the program, please write to us. We welcome your feedback and your suggestions and criticisms and any thoughts you have. Um, there are a lot of improvements planned. So if you still see, you see something that's not there that you were used to having a, a functionality or a benefit, write to us, but know that there is a lot of things that we couldn't put in the program just at the first release. Um, we just wanted to get a good working program out there, but the first update is almost already ready. And um, there are a lot of things that have been requested over the last six months for from people who have seen the beta and um, those are going to come out there. So just, um, we, we want to do this together with you. So please write to us as you learn the program and send us your thoughts and suggestions. And there's one more group of people I want to thank um, and their pictures are not up here, but it's our entire Synergy team that have been working tirelessly day and night to get this program to market and to deliver the program and to help install the program. Um, thank you so much. I'm, I'm just really proud to be part of this team.